you're um, carving some, um, some hens. There's a new company I've just started working for. Um, they wanted, they've already got the right hand or the left hand and I'm carving the left hand for them. I'm trying to get it as accurate as I can, taking measurements and everything else. Um, I think it, it's, a, it's obviously easier to scan in the original hand and once you've got the scan you can reverse it and then get it CNC cut in polystyrene um, but they didn't want to go down that route because it would cost them somewhere around about £3,000 um, so they thought it was easy if I just carve it for them um, I think it's fairly fairly close um, all in all and I think it's a, a much cheaper method for me to, to actually carve it for them and I think it's actually close enough as well this is the finished look of them when we get them chromed up and when, you, when you have two side by side they're so sort of um, so different in the sense that they're opposites you wouldn't notice any difference anyway but they look quite nice and these are going to be bar seats for people to sit on and these here are going to be tabletops, like mini tabletops for when people are sitting on here they can also take the drinks over there uh, very nice, they're going to be rotational cast uh, in a two part plastic and then spun which lasts about 20 minutes and then they clean up the seams afterwards uh, and then spray paint them but they've got to have a lovely finish to begin with in order to get the chrome effects we're coming up the best they can I prefer to carve in polystyrene um, as you can pick up the whole job and then just get round to all sides in one go. And you can also is offer the piece up to the original as well uh, and it makes it much more flexible and I also find that working in polystyrene is a lot faster than working in clay or other hard like materials. I think the best thing about working in polystyrene is it is actually carving because you're taking away the material as regards to working in clay where you're adding and taking away adding and taking away until your heart's content um, both are quite nice really but polystyrene is is my favorite is it medium here we are we're looking at the two of them together um, and see if we can see um, that they look like a family really and there are some similarities between the two both in scale and nature really you can see me here now checking the measurements on a clay table that I'm making it actually sits on the floor like, as you see it and on the top of it has a glass table top and the other hands which are stalls go around this table <laughs> The main reason why I've decided to build this one in clay is so I can check measurements and keep it on the floor and the, and the clay actually has some gravitas so I can actually sculpt it quite comfortably without it moving around when I offer the tabletop to it. Once again we do all our checks with the measurements making sure the fingers are the right girth, the right length and the right number. On top of this we're putting the ZA which you can see through the tabletop. Once we have finished the clay form as well as the polystyrene sculpture uh, we then have to take a plaster mould from both of those and then lay up in glass fibre and then we splash plaster onto the, onto the clay or the polystyrene uh, in order to make pieces from the mould. We generally would put about uh, three layers of plaster on and sometimes some scrim in order to pop the pieces apart without them being damaged. I always enjoy using Plaster Paris as it feels like quite an old school material but you get good quick results and it's relatively cheap um, in, um, as regards to silicon rubbers and fiberglass. Here we have the mould now upside down, we've finished the cap and we're now completing the bottom and making sure the base of the hand is absolutely square. Uh, and no ridges and bumps and we can get this as true as we can before we make the cap for the bottom. Here we have the mould now separated and we're putting um, a shellac um, varnish on there and we're, and we're waxing each piece of that individually and we're about to lay them up in glass fibre 
and we generally put two layers of um, gel coat and a fillite mix in so when we get the actual cast out and uh, from the mold we can actually sand down the cast um, it's good to use plaster as it breaks off quite easily um, and it gives us is it quite a good surface Once the glass fibre is out of the, the mould itself, we throw away the mould and that's what we call, i.e. a waste mould. It's only used to get one from it and then it's wasted. Uh, then we actually sand back and make the surface of the fiberglass hand absolutely lovely uh, and then we prime it and sand it and prime it until we're happy with the job. Once we've primed it, we then go over with the 2K hard paint, a black lacquer. Uh, and it gives it the most beautiful finish and at this stage we can see uh, when there's the smallest imperfections and you can see in the top we have the face once again uh, it's always good to spray things up in black because you do get the best finish of all like before you start taking your master moulds when we're happy with the black finish uh, and we consider it to be ready to be cast or moulded in fibreglass then we'll actually invite the client down to oversee it and make sure that it's absolutely what they want before we commit ourselves to any kind of silicon moulds or, or glass fibre moulds this is the stage that you can make some changes really and it's also the stage where you have your final say before it all goes to moulding I always think it's quite rewarding when you get to this stage before you take your mould because you can see the, 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 pro, the finished product like, as it is um, and this is probably the best it can be. First of all our client wanted us to make a, a PU um, as a rubber mould with a glass fibre jacket uh, but on reflection we decided to go for a fibreglass complete mould in several pieces um, as it's going to be a rotational cast. All the same, we did the work anyway, uh, and you can see me building up the walls in plaster in, and we are putting the ridges in, uh, which locates the rubber together. I thought I would show this process as it's quite important, uh, and also to let the client know that I did it as well. I, th I think it's always important um, to show each and every stage of the project, um, so the client knows where the money's gone, uh, and they understand the process. <laughs> Once we've walled up in plaster sin, we take a, a quick splash coat in plaster and then we wall up the back side of it in fiberglass. And this is now the first piece on the project. And within the first piece we add toggles so each piece can locate exactly together. Here we are now trimming the mold uh, and we're trying to get the walls exactly square to each other. And once it's trimmed, we will also drill holes and then bolt so it pinches the mold exactly tight when they go to rotational mold it. Once the mould is all uh, trimmed and sanded externally, then we take out the interior and we sand down both halves so they line up absolutely perfect as you can get them as it will save time in the process later on. Here we have the mould of the base where the hand uh, still sits on. Um, once again, we fiberglass it, we trim up the surface and in this particular case we've got bolts in where in this one we will have locations and drill holes um, and loose bolts like wing nuts. People always underestimate the mould making process. They just think they see what they get at the end of the day when there's really two or three processes um, that go on beforehand. Once the mould is dry, we then take them apart, give them a good wash and we wax them normally. Once again we're checking for flaws or imperfections within the mould and we sand them out and we polish them once again. So we have a mould, that's the back side of it, and we've actually laid in these metal clamps so you can actually do it up by bracket. Come out lovely and clean and it's half and half, 50-50 mix. We've already laid one up. Pop one out and it literally just come out, and then we're going to trim along this back edge. That so should be good. And the, other side, the top side, once again, have a lovely mould, and there's the toggles which line up. That's the top pull that's come off from it, and that will again get trimmed onto there. And then we can cut this out and then move it around one place.
just move it around one bit and then it can go with the right hand instead of the left. That's the basic idea. Once we have the base, then we can take measurements of it from around the clock and also above. Uh, so we get the left hand one to match the right hand exactly. This is once again is, um, is underestimated as these things take a long time to do and it also takes a long time to get right, which sometimes a client doesn't see. Um, but we'll try to make it as conscientious as we can and get it absolutely perfect. Now here we have um, a set of moulds which we have finished now and waiting for the client to come and pick them up. Uh, we think that they are as best they can be and then they're going to take them away to get rotation and moulded and hopefully they work well for the project. And here's a complete set of left and right and the table itself. Thank you very much for the work um, and I hope we can carry on um, creating sculpture for you. Thank you very much indeed, appreciate it.